Nate and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for sponsoring today's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. Niagara is the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products, including toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara products were originally designed just for plumbing professionals, but they're now available for homeowners as well. So, if you're remodeling your home or constructing new, check out NiagaraCorp.com to get long-lasting water savings. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And it wouldn't be okay if I didn't have my big dog with me, Big Nate Dog, in the building sitting there with the star on his chest. What's up, you, Nate? Hey, man, ain't nothing, man. I, I look at you, man, and last week, dude, I had a dude with a big old head, Kevin Mitch. <laughs> I, had a, I had a dude with a massive head. Your head ain't the size of Kevin's. I promise nah, you I'm not, that. I'm not filling out the whole frame. Yeah. I'm not filling out the frame like he did. <laughs> yeah. How you been doing? Where you been, Isaiah? Man, ripping and running, big dog. Ripping and running. Yeah. So I, I was gone last week because I went to go take advantage of some of the resources that the NFL provides to us. And so right. the NFL, for those that don't know, we have about a gazillion different resources for post, you know, for former players. So we got the, you know, and I know the NFL PA, that's our that's our union. And then you got the NFL Trust. We got the NFL Players Care Association. We got the Former Players Association. We got the – I don't even know, Nate. It's just yeah. about 20 doggone things. It's hard to keep up. But you have to, we have the resources. You just have to go search a little harder for them sometimes right. to find out exactly where they're located. Yes. Uh, but I, they have a program that allows for you to – they paired up with the, with the Cleveland Clinic. And right. for every five years, you're allotted an opportunity to go do extensive – checks with all the medical care that you can imagine mris cat scans e- uh, e- echoes ekgs blood work neuro uh, neurologists psychologists it's a whole gambit we literally go on site and you know uh, to a location of your choosing and they do all these tests for you for free and they get all the reports you meet with all the doctors and it's pretty much a it's an opportunity to find out where you're at so if we have those resources Nate, you got to take advantage of them you know okay yeah and now so I understand that they touch every part of your body. What part did they not touch? I mean, I, I you know I, I can tell you what they didn't touch, Nate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yo, yo man. No, but I, but I mean, I checked out for the most part. I mean, right. my, my body's beat up as you can expect it, you know. But um, I was more so concerned with the uh, the cholesterols and the heart, you know, and, right. and all the things yeah, that you really the things that you can't see. You right, know, you know the our backs and our knees and every other all of our extremities; those are all going to be jacked up from the physicality of our sport. But <laughs> uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sitting here with my wife. I'm trying to text her, tell her not to talk so loud. I don't know if we can. <laughs> I hear can't hear nothing. Her because she works from nothing. home. Yeah, this so, is, and this is a new platform. Okay. So we're, you guys, yeah. you guys are checking us out. We're we're from the crib right now. We're gonna be popping in the studio, out the studio. Yes, we are. I see you got the nice little paintings on the wall, Nate. Dog, okay. Did, did you do that one yourself? Yeah, man. My wife picked that man. I right right there. I don't even understand what that is. I never was an art guy, you know. I so I don't understand what that is. Like a big some glob on the wall to me. Hey, though. it look good. You know, it look but, good, hey, Nate. I like the color. Life is what it I is. I like the colors, man. Well, uh, what what you been up to over last week, man? Just chilling, man. Just chilling. You know, I've been traveling. Uh, what I'm trying to do is clean up my backyard. Okay. It took me 17 years to junk up my backyard, to junk up the inside of my house, to junk up my storage. So I, you know, I stopped traveling. I said, you know what? I'm going to clean up my backyard. I'm going to get grass back in my backyard. Okay. I'm going to get all this junk. I, I mean, I, I can't even explain it. I'm a junior hoarder. That's all I can tell you. Get my it's, house. And it's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. And then I got a house that's full of stuff I've had since I moved in here talking about my son or this, that, and other. So I told my wife, I'm finna, I'm finna stop traveling, get all this junk out of my house, man. Get all this stuff out of my storage, and I'm not going to replace it. She's been talking about a garage sale for three months now. And I'm like, come on, man. You either going to garage well, you, sale it hey, or you going to come home. You let me know so I can get, come get some of that old cowboy gear. Let me know when you do the garage sale. I'm coming to steal all of it. Cowboy, yeah, I ain't got none of that. That's all been sold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Man, but other than that, Zay, I'm just living the life, man, and waiting on this draft to see what the Cowboys do. Is they going to do anything different 
this year than they've done in past years. How are you feeling? What do you What do you think about it? I, I just what I'm what I'm thinking, and I, I'm looking right. In, I'm looking right into the mic. What I'm thinking is, yeah. whoever you decide to draft, whoever that best player is, uh-huh. if we're gonna go best available player, I don't care who you pick in the first, second, or third round, even the fourth. Please do not let that person come out of college injured. Our football is their second love. We need some guys that's dedicated to the game and has not had a bad history of injuries. It's one thing to get here and get injured, and it's another, but it's another thing to come off of injury and then we have to rehab you, may have you for the season, may not have you. That's not a good thing. The window of of opportunity is quickly closing on the Cowboys. So we need yeah. impact players. It's players that are going to play 45% or more of the time they're here in their first year. I feel that. I feel that. So as a, as the draft, we're here on draft week now, okay? The draft is yes. about to go down. Thursday night, it is popping off. The boys are going to be taking their pick in that, what, number 26 in the first round. And I believe they have a pick in every round, right? One through seven. Right, I think right, that's right. that's correct. Um, there's been a lot of speculation as to who they may be interested in and what they plan on doing, blase, blase, blase. Nate Dahl, I think we hit on it a couple weeks back in terms of what they need to do. Has your perspective changed on what you feel the Cowboys need to do going into this draft 2023? No, no sir. No. no, sir, because uh, I still think we need offensive linemen. Okay. I, I, well, I know we need offensive linemen. There you go. I know we need a tight end. And uh, I, then you can go with a linebacker with me or, or maybe another offensive lineman or defensive tackle. Uh, but those are positions that can anchor you. And then if the injuries hit in those areas, you don't have to, you don't have to uh, go to, into a mad scramble. Yeah. I feel you. We, there was a conversation that we had over on a, on a Cowboys platform. And I say we, it was myself um, and a few of the other guys or, you know, Kyle and, and, and some of the fellas. What we we went back and forth at it, Nate, and I'm not sure if you got an opportunity to hear the show, but there was a right. conversation that came up in regards to if B. John Robinson is sitting there at number 26 for whatever reason, if he seems if he happens to fall or even he, if he falls down to number 15 or something like that below the fifth, top 15. The guys on the show, No C and, and Kyle, were saying that you can't pass on that type of talent that you have to go get this guy, you have to add him to your roster. Even though you don't need a high-caliber running back, you just can't pass on a player that good. And my perspective was, is there an, a beast of an offensive lineman available at that same time? That's that question. They looked at me like I was crazy. They're like, what are we talking about B. John Robinson? Like, this dude's a beast. I said, no, no disrespect. But if I was building out a team, I am not going to bypass a necessity for a want. That, and that, 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 is, that is the problem of pass with the Dallas Cowboys. They yeah. want the big bang and not the longevity of saying, wow, okay, this guy's been uh, Martin, uh, Tyron Smith before he started getting injured. I mean, when you can have a piece that can last you anywhere from eight to 12 years versus mm-hmm. a piece that's going to go for four, four years and he's gone. Yeah. And, 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 and you're going to share the backfield. Now, if you telling me you're going to get this dude, he's a three down back and he ain't coming yep. out of the game, no matter what, yep. as long as Dak standing in there, he's standing in there. That means Tony Pollard's gone and we got Jones and another draft pick. A low draft. Hey, that, was, that, was my, that was my other argument. You're gonna, he's gonna share the backfield. How many running backs in this league don't really share the backfield? I can think of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one, and I can't even King think Henry. of King Henry. King Henry. That's the only look at, one. Look at, and, and, and King Henry had, needs a breather, you know, because they, <laughs> they trying to trade King Henry up out of there because they yep. everybody sees the value. Even a knucklehead like me who like a one back system sees the value of why would you spend $13 million minimum this year on running backs when you can spend $6 million, go out and get you a beast of offensive lineman off out of free agency 
and, and secure your line for the next four or five years because I don't care how great your talent is on the outside mm-hmm. and in the backfield. Ask the greatest player on earth on the planet right now that plays for Kansas City how he felt in the Super Bowl without his offensive line. Then, Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't, don't do you that can, to you yourself. You can insert – you could put talent around goons up front. That's right. You can. There's no, there's no lack of talent at the receiver or running back position. Never has been. There, you never, you've never been in the league and been like, ah, there just aren't any good running backs or good re- receivers in the league anymore. You, wow. there, it's never came. That's never been a conversation. There's more skill players that are capable than there are linemen that are capable. That's just the facts. That's just the facts. So knowing that that's a fact and knowing that you heard, you've been hearing Double J talk. Right. Double J's been talking about, Double J's been talking about how, um, how, what did he say? He said running backs have about a five-year window that you can get them. Right? He said you really, right. really can't, you want to secure guys for five years. After that, they're probably going, you're not going to want to repay them. Right. So if that's your mindset, go get the dudes that, that you're going to keep for 10 years, to your point, Nate. Cody, Most, if you want you, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, just when you find a beast of an offensive lineman, he gonna be around. Yeah, Cody Mitch is. Uh, the, the, I'm looking at the best available, and Cody Mitch okay. out of North North Dakota, and I hope I'm pronouncing it, is M A U C H. His first name is Cody out of North Dakota State. Uh, he's a tackle. He's at 53, okay. so that means he's a mid round, second round pick. Uh, Okay. Something like that, and and I would rather get a guy like that that's going to give you every down, going to come in and play for you. And I, and this is not a first, maybe a first round pick. This is a second round pick, but you you solidify that offensive line, and especially if you go out and pay Dak a whole lot of money, mm-hmm. and you got a so-so offensive line. What what did you just do? You just went in the hole. You you sure. just took. Now, if you if you're not gonna pay Dak, and you're gonna try to get some young uh, whippersnapper that's gonna be out there running all around, <laughs> don't know yeah. nothing, and you're just trying to you know tank it. That's one thing. But if you're saying that you have a chance to win, you got to look at your present offensive line as it stands. We right. have probably five starters, probably five starters, mm. and a lot, a lot of, of question marks, and a lot of. Who is that guy? Wow. What can he do? Ooh. Nate, yeah. Doug, please tell me, what, 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 were your, what were your thoughts on Double J saying that he's moving ball to the guard position? Did you hear that in the press conference? I need, I need to hear from you. I need to hear from the man himself. Mr. Nate Dog. what are your thoughts on that? Okay, you play right tackle and use semi-swing tackle. Guys are not as big and it's strong Correct. on the edges. Correct. You know, they are strong, they are athletic, but they're more quick, they're more speed, turning into power. Now, what you going to do with straight power? Are you telling me Josh Ball done got 100% stronger? I ain't talking about not 50%. 100, not 100, 50, 100, not 100, 100, 100, 100, because if a ta- because if a defensive end at 260, 270 can push him back into the quarterback. What what a 330-pound or 320-pound bull rushing tackle going to do? So you saying he – see, Mike Solari, I love you, man. I remember when you was a pup coming into the league, into the Dallas Cowboys. You was a hard worker. But, boy, you must be – you must got God-like tendencies, boy. You must, be, <laughs> you must got God-like tendencies, boy. He's a miracle you, worker, yeah, yeah, Boy, you laying hands on dudes over there, right? I hope so. That's what I believe. Wow. So, so you're saying you're saying is it is it like a dumb and dumber chance, like like one in a million, or like what what's the chances that you think he can bump I'm, down and be successful? I'm not saying that Josh Ball can't be a serviceable player in this league, but his first few years have not been what you say on the uptick. He uh he's just been a guy. And, and so until he get out there, and one thing I want to say. The smaller your window of success in, get, in getting to the second round of the playoffs, the more training camp means to you. If we go out there and a bunch of guys 
are just running around, especially young guys. I'm talking about especially young guys running around. Well, he's got, he need a rest day. Wow. He need a rest day? He, he, this is third year. He need a rest day? So if, if I'm one of them young guys, if I'm Josh Ball, I'm like, no, mm-hmm. coach, ain't no rest day. I'm working every day. I'm working on my craft every day because th- that is what it's going to take. If you're going to put – You know what? I saw him, Nate. I forgot how big he was. That's a large human now. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't <laughs> – Lord, Jesus. Don't make me call on him. <laughs> You know, I hear that Nate, so much. Nate, big dude, He's man. a large human. I, I saw okay, him at the but, coffee machine the other day. I was like, ooh, that's, that's a lot boy big. Com- complete the sentence. He's a large human, but he's not done anything yet. I'm not saying he okay. can't do anything, but okay. training camp has to mean something to these younger guys. The Foniacs and all of these guys, uh, even our uh, second team tight end, the one to play behind, Hendershot. The training camp has to mean something to you. You have yeah. to go in and work on your craft. You know, when 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 nobody's on the field, you got to be out there doing your steps. You got to be out there running routes. You got to be out there hitting dummies. Guys walk around now, they have eight days before they start putting on a pad. And then when they put on pads, they, they, they complained. Yeah. For real? Listen, the generation is different, Nate. We hear it in football. We hear it in, in basketball. I don't understand it, but it is what it is, man. That's that's the generation that we're in. And I have more questions about generational uh, influences and generational uh, – what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, how do you raise a youngin in this generation to have work ethic? Right? That's a whole other conversation, Nate, because I'm – I've been I've been tussling. You can't. It's hard. You can't. Let me tell you why. Because forty percent of society works from home. So when your kids see you get up and in your pajamas, you half brush your teeth, <laughs> don't wash your face, and walk to a computer and turn yeah. it on. Go get you some coffee. Fix you some breakfast. Some instant breakfast, whatever. And then walk to your computer. And then return it on because you took so long before you, and it, it timed out on you. And that's what your kids see. I know. Yeah, that's know, what your Nate. kids that's, that's, see. That's a whole we'll, we'll hit on that topic one day. But uh, draft, draft is here. OTAs. What does OTAs mean to some of these, some of these second and third year guys? It should mean I'm going to show the coaches that I'm ready. And I'm physically physically ready. I've mentally grown. Uh, you're going to have to tell me to slow down because I'm coming to get somebody's job. That's what OTA should mean to draft picks. That's what, you know, and, and then when the coach is out there, we don't want to hurt one another. We don't want to do this right here. Then when you get to training camp, we don't want to hurt one another. We don't want to do nothing. Then we get to the regular season. Well, such and such out for eight weeks. Hold on. Well, the reason they out for eight weeks, because we didn't do nothing for the first eight weeks. So now we out for eight weeks because we turned it up 100 miles an hour. You can't do that. When you don't have a proven team and people say, yeah, they do. They was 12 in this last year. The year before that, they was 10 in this. Yeah. But each year you get younger and younger and younger. You don't have enough horses to show these guys. I don't know. I may be over speaking. We got Gilmore and Cook, two successful players. You know, I hope they're workers because if they come in and pull that mama, daddy, I'm going to get the computer thing. We in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we in trouble. Yeah. So what, I'm serious, what bro. do you expect to take place during OTAs? I expect for uh, the young guys to come in and do what they have to do. I expect for... Uh, everybody that can practice, they should practice because Coach McCarthy is putting a little bit more of his offense into it. So uh, it's going to take a little bit of extra work. The players are going to have to be smarter. So that means you have to put in a little bit more tape work. You have to put in a more, little bit more uh, taking of notes. Uh, everything can be taken for granted. You want to you get in. Like I said, we got six offensive linemen, five and a half. 
offensive linemen. So these guys want to be up and running if they can. Who, who's the half, Nate? <laughs> <laughs> you said, but Josh Ball is the swing guard. So that's, that's a quarter. So you find you another guy. Get you a, a, another quarter, and we got a half. Oh, man. Come on, man. All right. Hey. All right. Last question for you, Nate. What What <laughs> would make Nate elated coming off of this weekend's draft? Like, when we come back and we sit down and the we song. talk next week, what, what is going to have you hype? What would have to take place? They, if you come in and say it. Man, I probably I probably run over to the cowboy. I probably do the, the press conference. Somehow, somewhere we can get down there watching him from Georgia. The big tight end, we can get him. Oh, I'm running up in there, bro. I'm running up in there. We can run two tight ends <laughs> with him and first. But what, but what, Come on. what if one of those what if one of Come those uh, two hundred and forty pound tight ends that they say have sure hands that that's ranked above him, what if they are available before him? If they can't block what good does it do I'm us? With you, Nate. You know we 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 need people that can do both. If you got a tight end that can get in the way and that can fight and, and block a little bit and possibly dominate, now now that can be everything he, he needs to be. And, people and, don't understand so, how much that opens up a uh, tight end with that ability. How much that opens up your offense? Yes, yes. I mean, uh, Lamar Jackson. Yep. Andrews, that is why Lamar Jackson has been right. so successful. A guy that can get in your way, block, hold his block long enough to get the running, help with the running game, and then be able to run those routes. And you can put him on, on, right at the end of the line, right beside the tackle, and he can run his routes from there. Well, you, it, how do you cover a tight end that's on end of the line? I, I, you know, you can go out to that slot or you can go out wide, I mean, you know, unless you're a top two uh, tight end, the, the kid from uh, the 49ers or the kid yeah. from the uh, yeah, Kansas from City. I mean, them them the only two. Now the rest of them, the rest of them, y'all can y'all can make it, act like that. But you get physical with the rest of them, they'll yeah. shut it down. You get physical and nasty with them, they'll shut it down. All right. So to make Big Nate, Nate Newton happy and elated, ready to jog around the block all the way to the Cowboys facility. From Tim Buck too. You said you just need Big Washington. That's all you need. That's you right. don't need alignment. Uh, uh, you know what? Because he is alignment. This dude is six, what, eight, 275 pounds. Yeah, that, yeah. Set that edge, <laughs> baby. Like they say on defense, set that edge. We'll be set that edge. Now we can let Tony Pollard do what he wants, and then we go get that kid that kid Gibbs from my from Alabama. Ooh, yes, sir. <laughs> Come on now. Get Cody. From North Dakota State, come hey. on now. We running. Nate, I'm things. with you. I I will do a cartwheel and I will attempt a back. No, I ain't gonna tip no back foot because I'm gonna be, end up right back at the Cleveland Clinic. But I'm a, <laughs> I'll do a cartwheel if the Cowboys get Big Darnell Washington and they get a beast yeah. of an offensive lineman. If they can check those two boxes, I will be a happy human. That's, I'm not saying that's all they need, yes, but I'm too. saying if they check those two boxes, Nate. This team is going to be so much better than they were last year. Yeah. Yeah, then we'll have seven offensive linemen. Then we'll have seven offensive linemen because Darnell Washington is our offensive linemen. We'll have seven offensive linemen. The five starters, Cody, Darnell. Now, Josh Ball can take another year to develop. Y'all heard it here, man. That's Big Nate Dog speaking to you guys, man. We're going to come back for the crib and let you guys know the real Coming up on draft week, you guys enjoy the draft. We're going to come back next week and let you guys know how we feel about it. And, of course, going to hit on some other things, um, as always. And then it's that time of the year for us to start bringing in some guests. So y'all be ready for that. Oh, one got? more thing. I'm sorry. I, I hate to, Oh, how's your hockey oh, team doing up there? Yeah. Tell me how your hockey team you, you doing. Do you want to talk I'm about them, them Seattle cracking, baby? What's cracking, yeah. Nate? Dog? Right, right. What's well, cracking? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, Seattle cracking. We off and popping the playing? series. Yeah. As of the, t- of the time of this filming, all right, the series is two and two, all right, against the world right. defending Stanley Cup champions, the Colorado Avalanche. That's right. The new kids on the block wow. are holding it down, Nate, and we got their backs up against right. the wall. The last three games, Colorado, it's in Colorado, back to Seattle. 
Right. And if game seven is needed, it goes back to Colorado. We're going to find out what these boys is about. Right. I'm, I'm proud of them, what they've done so okay. far, but the work's not done yet. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just That's wanted up. to know. You know I represent. I to know, man. You know I represent, Nate. You know, and you know what? This yeah. is my hope. This is my hope, Nate. Okay? And this is what we might have to do. If, <laughs> right. like, we'll know by this by, by the time we film again, if the Stars and the Kraken both win their series in this first round, mm-hmm. They will meet uh-huh. starting next week. Ooh, they will meet in the second round of the playoffs. <laughs> so what you're saying is we need the Kraken to flush. The, what is the Avalanche? Yeah, we need we need we need the Kraken to flush another one with them doggone Avalanche in the toilet bowl. You dog all right? Yeah, you all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Niagara. Thank you for sponsoring us. Already. Y'all. Hey, that's another episode, y'all. Let me tell you something. That's myself, Isaiah, and the big Nate dog back in the building. We'll see y'all next time. We gone. Go Celtics.